Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, if this announcement has not been made, um, I would like to wish all the fathers here happy Father's Day. Um, I'm here this morning to present to you uh, a new troponin that's available in a, uh, commercially right now. And this is really going to have a change in mindset for all of us. It's a, it's, it's a new assay which is going to break new grounds uh, in our day-to-day -day life. Um, I am going to talk about um, what is the assay and why are we calling it high-sensitive troponin? What is the analytical and clinical guidelines for this troponin? What are the unmet clinical needs? Uh, then I'll talk about the assay itself, the architect stat high sensitive troponin I, and end up with the summary. Defining a high sensitive troponin assay. This assay has fulfilled all the criteria that is required to be called as a troponin assay and also a high sensitive troponin assay. It has a CV of less than 10%. It is able to detect more than 50% of healthy subjects, meaning that you are going to get troponin level for each and every one of us. The decision point is going to be within three hours. You, you take a sample when the patient comes into uh, the emergency department, and you can decide whether this patient can go home or be admitted in the CCU for further investigation for AMI. This is a very busy slide. I've put up uh, the slide just to show you what are the assays which are not high sensitive. Uh, you might be using some of them. Um, just to show you, it has been proved, these are the contemporary uh, troponins. Now, there are very few high sensitive troponin assays available in the market right now. Uh, right from what we are offering in the Abbott Architect High Sensitive Troponin I, Backman's Access, the Nanosphere, the Singulex, and also the Siemens Vista. As far as the troponin T assay is concerned, we have the Roche High Sensitive Troponin Assay. Now, when you look at all the uh, parameters that have been put there, the LODs and the percentage of normal detection, uh, you can turn around and ask me, the single X happens to be one of the best troponin assays because it detects 100% of the normal, healthy population. Uh, it's a good assay. Uh, the only um, drawback is the turnaround time is three hours. So a uh, patient might die by the time you get your results. Uh, we have come a long way with troponin assays, uh, right from those who uh, were able to give us a detection within 8 to 12 hours. Then we have moved to something that we could detect within 6 hours. But now I'm talking about an assay which you can detect even at the stage where the patient is having a pre-ischemic attack. Meaning that a slight change in the troponin level is definitely going to be picked up by the high sensitive troponin assay. So what is the beauty about this assay as far as the improved precision and the sensitivity is concerned? Why is a total imprecision of less than 10% CV of a variation of 99% important? Why do you think so? Because the assay, when it has a, a CV of 10%, less than 10% CV below the 99% percentile it is able to pick up low levels. So slight changes in the troponin level is going to be a positive pickup rate for you. And why is detecting more than 50% of normal subjects very important? The reason is, in our four years of experience of doing this essay, uh, research in this essay, we realized that the outcome is the worst when the levels are low. It's easy when patient comes to you when the troponin levels are high. You immediately attend to them and treat them. But when the troponin levels are low, 
and the change in the serial sampling is still below the cutoff value, but significant enough for us to take an action, those are the patients who have worse outcomes. So the benefits of this high troponin assay, one, it has improved precision, it has improved sensitivity, it has improved robustness. It gives you an opportunity to have a faster decision on discharge and admission, and more reliable and faster rule in and rule out decision. This is going to really help the ED's physicians and the cardiologist. Can you imagine if your ED physician at the hour three can decide whether this patient goes home or hand it over to the cardiologist? And can you imagine at the hour three, the cardiologist is really preparing this patient for further invasive surgery for uh, management for this patient. Three hours. It's going to have fewer unnecessary procedures and tests. Believe me, studies have been done saying that if you rely on high sensitive troponin I, you don't have to fall back to other biomarkers at all. A single biomarker could come to, to aid in your diagnosis of AMI. It has a faster turnaround time, reducing length of stay in patients and in the ED. Now let's come to the analytical performance. This is what you'll see in the product insert. This assay values are used as an aid in the diagnosis of myocardial infarction and to aid in the ass assessment of 30 and 90 days prognosis relative, relative to all causes of mortality. So not only this assay is going to help you to make diagnosis in AMI, it is also going to help you in monitoring this patient after they have been treated. This assay has, a, has a, had a little bit changes compared to our earlier contemporary troponin. As far as the sample volume, we have increased the sample volume. The epitope, we have very specifically picked up one epitope, meaning that if it picks up the patient it, having AMI, it is going to be very, very positive. So we are very confident with the single epitope, this particular assay is going to be very good. The antibody selection de detection has been made robust with the addition of chimeric antibody. All this is going to improve the specificity, the sensitivity, and increase the signal of the assay. Now, when we were starting off with this assay about four to four, five years ago, we wanted to take this assay to a lot of people when we had done an in-house study. In our in-house study, we did uh, studies on this assay to establish the 99 percentile of the general population. And what we did realize as we are doing is, we realized that this particular assay give us, gave us different cutoff values for the males and females. If you looked at the male column, you'll see that it's significantly higher in the male compared to the column in the females where they were significantly lower. And this created a lot of doubt in us. Are we going in the right direction? Are we establishing something new here? So what we did, we took this assay, took to all the investigators around the world, people like Van Gay, Omlan, Autachun in Singapore, we took to Fred Apples in the US, and we gave them the assay to test it in their own population. And what was the outcome? Every population had a similar outcome. Males had higher cutoff values, females had lower cutoff value. Now, this really, causes a lot of excitement. Are we coming into a new era of giving troponin values for males and females? What we did, we further went on with our investigation. We compared with our older troponin and we wanted to see whether things were correlating. This assay had a limit of detection of 1.9, which is five times better than the older troponin it had the ability to pick up normal populations of more than 50%. To be exact, it picks up 96% of the normal cardio-healthy population. And when we looked at the cutoff value, there was not much of difference between the older troponin and the newer troponin. So we were kind of comfortable. We were there. We are not going anywhere wrong with it. So then, 
we took this essay to Fred Apples in the US and he said, can you do us a favor? Can you tell us, are we establishing something new here? And can you test it on the, all the other platforms that you have in your lab? Then he was able to show, okay, with the high sense, the one on, on my right, extreme right, which is on your extreme left, are the high sense troponin assays, which are available. And the greens are the ones that are commercially available. The one that has been shaded, the bar that has been shaded in black, is still in development. So you have a choice between high sense troponin I, Abbott's, and high sense troponin T, Roche, for your use at present. There are two criteria that have been established. One, your assay has to have a 10% CV, less than the 99 percentile. Two, your assay needs to pick up more than 50% of normal population for it to be called a high sensitive troponin I. Now, with this five assays that are available and two that is commercially available, you would see only one which fulfills the criteria that it is a high sense troponin I. I am not saying the other assay is not good. I'm saying for the criteria to be called as high sense, there's only one commercially available assay at present. Now, how do we usually calculate the 99 percentile? What we do is we go ahead and collect our cardio healthy population meaning that they fulfill the criteria, they don't have high cholesterol, sugar is below normal, and blah, blah, blah. That, that is there. We follow the Delimo criteria. And then once we collect all the troponin level, we will arrange it according to the rising troponin level. This is how it will look in the graph. And then what we'll do, we'll pick up the 99th percentile and then come to a calculation. This is how it is done. The older assay had an LOD, which was very far down the graph, meaning that this older assays could only pick up higher values. LOD is the level at which the assay makes the noise. So our older assays could only pick up higher troponin values. What did that mean? It meant that the assay could not read normal general population troponin level. So whenever you got troponin level no, detected, that means the patient is having something wrong. But that was our, it is ingrained in our mind that when you have troponin level detected, something is wrong with this patient. And the 99 percentile was very close to the LOD. Meaning that if patient was having a value, that means he was having an incident. That is the level at which the SE was making a noise. Now, everything changed with the high sensitive troponin I. Look at the LOD. The LOD is very close to the graph, meaning that this is an assay which cannot read a small population of the general uh, cardio healthy people. So, you have a huge number of us who will have our troponin level. Imagine you have your normal troponin level. I'm just going to sidestep here. You have a normal troponin level and you end up going for a feast and then having epigastric pain and everybody being in a medical conference and everybody is wondering whether you're having a AMI and they take you to the nearest cardiac center, they do a troponin level, which is five. And the ED specialist says, oh, it's below the cutoff value. But if you can establish your troponin level that you have done on your normal checkup and say, hello doctor, my normal troponin level is one. So five, which is even be, uh, below the cutoff value, is going to be very, very significant. So this is where we are going up to. So when we have the newer assay, the 10% CV is going to change. It is coming within the 99 percentile. And this assay is going to give you values from female, values for male, and a general cutoff value. 